dear learners welcome to nio studio being a science teacher it's very important to understand yourself the science and its implications and its applications part of diploma in elementary education you will have some idea about learning science and teaching science at upper primary level let us see what exactly is science we talk hear and use the word science very often when we say science what comes to our mind a white lab coat and a microscope or an astronomer looking through a telescope or launching of a space shuttle or broadcasting and telecasting sound and images through radio and television that is what is happening now or making use of machines in our houses that we use like refrigerator oven etc what exactly is science is it a collection of facts or is it a book containing the facts or is it simply the scientific advancements that we see all around us all the above examples which are given are some aspects of science but none of them provides full picture science is much more than that in simple words it is a systematic study of nature let me give a little more clarity it is the observation understanding and interpretation of objects and events around us some examples of objects and events of nature that we observe are cloud formation rainfall rainbow formation spread of agarbatti across a room reverse flow from hills to plain areas birds fly but snakes don't fly flowers have colors but leaves are green we make curd using bacteria but some bacteria and virus cause diseases coal in thermal plants and also there is in pencil the list goes very long science relies on testing ideas with evidences that are gathered from the experiments or some more observations during experiments are in the nature look at these questions normally children ask why is the sky blue why did the raindrops come downwards why are the roses of different colors these are some of the innocent questions which a child may ask it is only with the help of science we can answer such questions with much clarity an important character of science is that it is straightforward there are no ifs and buts the aim of science is to find out the real working of the nature science is our knowledge of everything right from the atoms in the molecules and up to the level of the nuclear fires that happens in the sun everything when you look at the aim of science science has some aim what is its aim science aims to expose the mysteries of nature by asking questions and try to find out the answers for those questions the answers will have no confusions but will be very clear the scientists try to answer the questions by very reliable and objective methods like experiments etc there are thousands of labs all over the world doing this without science we could not have become modern so we have some idea about aim of science then what are the features of science science has some features if you see the features basically science is collection of facts and also the processes that means the objects which which we see around us and the events that occur around us and how they occur why they occur this is one of the features of science second part of the feature is science is a systematized learning systematic means it is an in an order from observation to finding answers that includes experiments 
The third point is the science is an accumulative and continuous process. Facts are accumulated, but they are also in a connected manner. If I give some examples, coal is present in the earth, everybody knows it. Coal is a transformed debris of millions of years old of dead and decaying biological materials. Coal burning gives heat. This heat gives us electricity in thermal electricity plants. There is a connection in all these facts. So, science is both accumulative and also continuous. The fourth point is science is reliable and objective. Wherever in this world the observations and experiments can be repeated to get the same result with no confusion. That is what the meaning of reliability. The reliability is based on the same result wherever it is done irrespective of the investigator. There is no subjectivity in science that is the beauty of science. What are the applications of science? An important and underlying aspect of the study of these events and objects is its application. Understanding of events and objects can be used by us to manipulate. That means, we can change or modify to help the people. Best example of this is like knowing what an antibiotic does can help cure a disease in the people. So, science helps to improve our lives through its applications. Some of the applications in our daily life are TV, radio and communication equipments use concept of waves, electronics and electricity. The domestic appliances like cooker, oven, refrigerator, they work on electricity, pressure and heat. Observation of stars and astronomy, launching of space shuttle through which we do space exploration, mobiles we use for wireless contact with other people, smartphones are used to talk to the people, store the photos, retrieve the photos, transfer the photos, send the photos. Internet is where we put our information on the websites and we can retrieve the information all over the world. So, it combines waves and also electronics. Now, if you come to coal, it is used in thermal plants to produce electricity. Coal is also used in different other, part, other parts in our life. Technology of motors has revolutionized our transport sector and so on, the list goes on like that. Without applications of science, all the modern equipments with all our gadgets, jets, internet, new medicines, new treatments are all not possible or even we cannot imagine without the science. Without them, we cannot call ourselves to be modern at all. Hence, study of science is important for everyone. The moment students understand the importance of science and its use in day to day life, students will show more interest towards the subject. This is where the role of teachers comes into picture. When you have clear picture about science, its implications and its applications and the experience of experiments, students will get excited. Let us define science more technically with the above information. So, we have seen already the applications and now let us define science more technically with the above information what we have gathered till now. Science is an accumulated and systematized learning of natural phenomena. Here phenomenon refers to objects and events. Then what is the nature of science? Let us see what is its nature. The point number one about nature is, it is collection of facts and meaningful linking of facts. So, there is collection and also linking. How is it? When we see some examples, science talks about cells in living systems. There are different cells which are functionally different and some cells become another cells and some cells live only for some time. So, the knowledge is also connected. It is accumulated knowledge and it is also meaningful linkage is there between one fact and another fact. The second point I am saying is, 
science is exciting to observe, understand and apply. It is thrilling to see something that we have not seen before. Students really get excited in the laboratories to see and perform experiments. The kinesthetic experience of the children is very important while learning the science. When they try to do on their own, with their own hands, they will feel excited and enthused. The third point about this is science is, it is very useful. Science is very useful. Scientific applications are very useful to people through new technologies, new appliances, new treatments, what not. Science is almost inseparable from our lives. The fourth point is, science is an ongoing process and it is never ending or never finishing. Let me say, study of cells led to organelles that they are present inside the cells. The organelles have got big molecules like proteins. These proteins have got smaller molecules like amino acids. The molecules have got atoms and atoms have got electrons and now manipulations are being attempted at atomic level. Knowledge in science thus accumulating and expanding tremendously. The fifth point is, it is a global human effort, it is not one country, one town or one place. All over the world, people are working on it, they are trying to understand and they are trying to develop the new technology understanding the concept of scientific events. There is a huge scientific community all over the world. It is not just one man's effort. The sixth point is, it is a community enterprise. It is a sort of two way process. Science is a community enterprise. Two way exercise in the sense, there are different laboratories at different universities. They share their findings and work further along with one another. There is collaboration. One answer in one lab can become source of a new question in another's mind. Based on community interactions and their needs, scientific research expands and new discoveries and inventions are made. Science progresses by collective efforts because science is so huge, it cannot be done by one. So, science is a community enterprise. The seventh point is, science is also interconnected. This is another important feature. Science is not isolated with one fact. You cannot compartmentalize the science into physics, chemistry, biology or mathematics like that. It means, physics, chemistry and biology all other subjects are also connected in some events and processes. Let me give some examples. There is something called biophysics, there is something called biochemistry something called physical chemistry, there is genetic engineering, there are mathematical modelings. The new model has come based on the mathematical modelling, even the diseases can be predicted. So, science is also interconnected. Then what comes? Process of science. What is the scientific process? If you look at it closely, each scientific observation and finding solutions are the part of a process of science. So, scientific process involves observation and finding solution. The process can be seen in many of our daily routine activities also. We also do this scientific observation and finding a solution, though we may not be a scientist. If the scooter does not start, carbon deposit in the plug could be a reason and when carbon is cleaned, scooter starts. If the power supply is off, replacing a fuse, we try to replace a fuse and that could be a solution. In each of the scientific processes, there are elements of observation, then evidence analyzing and then find a solution. Science is not mere collection of facts, but also process of finding answers and further observations for the questions that come from previous answers. So, it is a continuous process. Now, what are the characteristics of scientific process? The scientific process has got some characteristics. Let me see, the first characteristic is, the science believes universe is predictable. Science assumes that universe and its events are generally constant and predictable. Let me elaborate. Sun rises east, sets in west. So, time concept has come. 
Further process of science proceeds with this observation. The time change in different locations is depending on sunrise and sunset. When you see GM 10 India, there is 5 and a half hours time difference. Similarly, respiration consumes oxygen and releases carbon dioxide. Based on this, other scientific observations go on. It goes on like that. So, we believe that universe is predictable. Similarly, second point is knowledge and processes are not done privately, but everything is in public domain. They are all published regularly almost every day. The knowledge and processes that are done in a particular place, they are not confined to that place. They are all published regularly. Where are they published? In magazines, maybe fortnightly, monthly, six monthly magazines, science magazines, all over the world in different languages they are published and shared. The scientific process is a piecemeal effort, but with an overall and holistic objective. Every process may be a piecemeal, but it has got some connection. Each discovery in scientific process is connected to a larger objective. Let me elaborate. X-ray discovery has led to now X-ray photography of bones, so that we are able to diagnose the bone fractures. Now, it has gone to further extent. Now, we have MRI. When you see the fourth point, science is a never ending process. It never ends because new questions will come. We find new answers. Some new questions again will come out of the answers what we have already got. No answer is final. From the answer itself, we get again some more doubts, some more observations. We try to experiment and we observe again and we try to find out some new solutions. One another important point that is fifth point is measurement is an important aspect in process of science. It is very important. When you talk about measurement, what is this measurement? When we say fever, the temperature of 100 degrees Fahrenheit is a measurement. Time concept in seconds, minutes and hours is a measurement. Kilometers per hour is a measurement. Volts is a measurement, amperes is a measurement, watts is a measurement. So, measurement is an important aspect of process of science. Hence, science is the most interesting subject that directly or indirectly connects and affects our life. Let us revise what we have seen in this unit. We started with what is science, we try to see the meaning of science. And we have also tried to define the science, scientific process, what happens in science, what is done by scientists in science, what are the applications of science also we have seen with some real life examples. And we have tried to study what is the nature of science. And also we have seen the process of science, what happens in the process, its characteristic features and its implications. I am sure you had a fair amount of understanding of science. Thank you.